Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bimsy Code, and in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at setting up our first character controller. So to get started, let's go over to our hierarchy and right click. So from here, we want to hover over 3D object and create a capsule. This capsule is going to be our player. So let's start by zeroing this one out. So he's got a position properly set and he's visible in the camera's perspective. Uh, we want to move him back a little bit to sort of center him in the middle of our game. So I think this is probably a good position for him to be running along the axes. So with the game we're making, we're going to make our character sort of run side to side like this and sort of pick up the pickups that are falling from the sky. Next, we want to give our character a name just in the hierarchy over here. So let's just click him and uh, rename him to player. Um, we can also set up his tag. So basically what a tag is, it's an identifier for what the game object is. So if we set this tag to player, later on we can grab the player by referring to his tag and it'll automatically select this game object to do stuff with. Um, the next thing we would want to do is create a material for him so we can distinguish the player's color based on the rest of our game scene. So I'm going to set the material up as a dark blue material maybe. Um, so I'm just going to go into my materials folder right click, uh, let's find create, and let's create a material. So I'm just gonna name this one blue. Uh, let's go over here to make this one dark blue. All right, let's apply that to our player. Uh, that looks pretty good, I think. All right, next we're gonna get to creating our character controller script to be able to move the player side to side. So to do that, let's go into our scripts folder over here. I'll right click, create, C sharp script, and I'll create a character controller. Cool. So with Visual Studio already set up, I'm going to jump into my script. So just double click that one. And here we are in our character controller script. Now you can see all of your scripts on the side here. So let's just uh, open this one up. We can see scripts, but for now, all we've got is the character controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of block out what we're going to be programming today for our character controller. So let's say we want to create a variable here to store our, our movement speed for the player's movement on the side to side axes. So let's just call this uh, setup player move speed. Um, then in our update method here, what we want to do is we want to uh, catch the player's input as they press the arrow keys to move the player side by side side to side. So let's just set that up with some comments over here. Uh, receive player input. Then with that input we want to handle the player's input and finally we want to move the player. And that's all we're going to be doing in today's uh, lesson. So let's start by creating a player move speed variable. So we'll create a private float move speed and set that to a default value of 100. Now we add the F at the end of this 100 to signify that this variable is a float. Even though we've defined it, it's just good practice. So next we're gonna add a uh, player input to the update method. So the update method gets triggered every single frame that the game is being run. So to do this, we wanna say if input.getAxes horizontal, sorry, horizontal, because this is supposed to be a string, is greater than zero floats. So what this means is we're using the input method from uh, Unity's default libraries, um, and we're getting the axis. Now if we jump back into our game scene, we can visualize this by taking a look at our uh, project settings, and that's just in edit, project settings, and this is the input manager. So in the input manager, we can create and remove axes. And these are essentially what we're grabbing when we call the method input get axes horizontal. So this horizontal is defined already as a default input here. If we open this one up, we can see the negative button and positive buttons are set to left, right, A and D. So closing this one out and jumping back to our code, we now know that getting the the axis horizontal is uh, going to be grabbing the left and right arrow keys. So what this zero represents is the default value that horizontal is set to. Now when we hit the left arrow key because it's set to the negative input and right being the positive input, we're actually incrementing or decreasing that value to a maximum of either one or negative one. So the range of this horizontal can be 
negative one float to about one float being the max value. So let's just comment that one there so we've got it on the side for reference. So when this is true, we're going to want to move our player to the right. So to move our player to the right, we're going to use the transform dot translate method. Now what this transform means is we're grabbing the game object that this script is attached to, which will be this player game object, and we're going to be grabbing this transform. So this transform just contains the position, rotation, and scale. So jumping back into our code, we can now grab the transform and use this translate method, which if we hover over it, it'll tell us that this translate moves the transform in the direction and distance of translation. So let's start filling this translate method in. We're going to want to move the player vector 3 dot right, which is just passing in a direction. We're going to multiply it by time dot delta time. And then we're also going to multiply it by move speed because we want to move the player according to whatever speed we pass through. So what this delta time does is it grabs the time between this frame and the last frame. Why it's important that we multiply it here is because the update method gets fired once per frame. So if we weren't going to include this delta time, then the move speed that the player would be moving would would match the FPS of the game. So based on the hardware you're playing on, your player would move faster or slower. You'll notice with this code, the player will only be able to move right. And that's because at the moment, we only check for a positive horizontal. So to fix this, we'll copy this if statement and check for negative horizontal axes. So that'll be in the range of negative one to zero. And in this case, we would want to transform.translate negative vector three right, and that is essentially going left. So the best way to actually control the player's speed is by exposing the variable so that we can control the variable just like any other variable over here. So for instance, if we look at capsule collider, we can choose the height of our capsule collider by messing around with this variable in the actual editor. So we wanna do something similar here, but with our character controller script. So jumping back into the code, Let's uh, just take a look at this script here. And we've got this move speed variable. So everything's already set up for us. What we can do is make this public. And now when we jump back into our, into our uh, Unity editor and we click our player, you'll notice that if we expand this, we've got the move speed property right here. So what we can do is if we go into our game, hit play, um, start moving our player around, we can actually update these values live. So if we make this 20, you'll notice straight away the player's move speed has dropped. Now if we make this two, for instance, you can see we're moving super slow. So to fix this, I think 20 was a pretty good speed. Let's keep it at 20 right there and perfect. So you'll notice though, when we hit play, it doesn't save our variables. So we'll wanna go back in the editor and press 20 here. And when we go back into play mode, it's updated the variable there. Jumping out of play, you can see it as well. Perfect. I think that wraps up this episode, and I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.